Imagine this, you're holding the most powerful device in the world. Your phone, your computer, maybe even a self-driving car. What makes it all possible? Semiconductors. This is why the world has seen an insane amount of progress in this field over the past decade. We've come from barely having enough computational power to run basic applications to now being able to handle complex AI algorithms, gaming graphics, and autonomous vehicles. But despite all this progress, there's one feat that no company has come close to surpassing. Manufacturing transistors smaller than one nanometer. That was until now. One company has cracked the code and that's TSMC. To understand why TSMC's innovation is so huge, let's take a step back and look at how transistors, those tiny switches inside every chip, have evolved over time. Think of a transistor like a tiny valve controlling the flow of electricity in your device. Transistors can either amplify or switch the electrical signals passing through. More transistors on microchips allow them to send out more instructions, increasing the computational power. As technology advances, we've had to make these valves smaller and smaller. But here's the catch. When you shrink things down too much, they start to break down. In the 20th century, we used something called a planar transistor, which was essentially a simple on and off switch for electricity. It worked well at the time, but as we tried to shrink it down, we started running into problems. The smaller we made it, the more electrons would leak through the transistor when it was supposed to be off. This is called electron tunneling, and it's a big headache for chip makers. To solve this problem, engineers turned to a new design that would eventually change everything. FinFET technology. Imagine trying to control the flow of water through a pipe. If the pipe is too small, the water starts leaking out, right? Well, a FinFET transistor is like wrapping that pipe with fins, making it easier to control the flow. By creating a fin around the transistor, we get better control, less leakage, and better efficiency. This breakthrough allowed for smaller, faster, and more energy efficient chips. By 2012, companies like Intel and TSMC adopted FinFei, and it became a game changer. You've probably seen the power of these chips in your own devices. Think about the Apple M series chips, but even FinFets have their limits. As we continue shrinking transistors, we hit the walls of physics. That's where the next big thing comes in, gate all around or GAA technology. Now picture the transistor as a pipe, like before, but this time, instead of wrapping fins around it, imagine a protective layer surrounding the whole thing. This design lets us control the flow of electricity from all sides, making it much more efficient and preventing any leakage. With GAA, we're not just talking about smaller chips, we're talking about chips that are more powerful and more energy efficient than ever before. TSMC is already mass producing GAA transistors as part of its N2 technology, and we'll see the first devices featuring these transistors, like the next iPhone, soon. This is huge because GAA transistors will enable chips that are not only smaller, but faster and more energy efficient than anything we've seen so far. But how do we make these super tiny, super powerful transistors? It all comes down to lithography, a process where light is used to etch designs onto silicon wafers. To make these chips as small as we need, the light has to be incredibly precise. This is where ASML comes in, with its extreme ultraviolet lithography, or EUV machine. It can print billions of transistors on silicon wafers every hour. Before entering the machine, each plate is covered with a liquid that reacts to light. This is what is called the photoresist, and it reacts to light like the film of a camera in a dark room. These machines use ultraviolet light to create incredibly fine details, making it possible to shrink transistors down to the 3 nanometer level and beyond. The challenge is to double the number of transistors on a chip every two years to meet the demand for increasingly powerful devices and computers. However, as we approach the 1 nanometer threshold, the challenges become even more significant. Quantum effects, like quantum tunneling, make it harder to control how electrons flow. At sizes below 1 nanometer, electrons can jump through barriers that would normally stop them. This means the usual methods to prevent leakage and power loss aren't as effective. So what's the solution? TSMC and other companies are exploring new materials, like 2D materials, and carbon nanotubes that could better handle 
handle these quantum effects than traditional silicon. These materials could hold the key to making chips even smaller and more efficient than we ever thought possible. 2D materials like graphene, a super thin material made from carbon atoms, are also being explored. These materials are incredibly thin, just one layer of atoms thick, but they have unique properties that make them perfect for tiny efficient chips. Some 2D materials can carry electrical signals much faster than silicon, making them ideal for creating more powerful processors that could fit into smaller spaces. While TSMC's progress is incredibly impressive, the road to one nanometer chips isn't just about technology, it's also deeply influenced by politics. You might have heard about the US-China tech war, and it's impacting the semiconductor industry too. For example, the US government banned Huawei from accessing some of the most advanced semiconductor technology, including EUV machines, which are crucial for making the next generation of chips. This ban has significantly slowed down China's progress. On top of that, tariffs and trade restrictions have made it more expensive to produce the materials and equipment needed for advanced chips. Look, I don't want to get political, but when it comes to the semiconductor industry, tariffs and trade restrictions are really starting to stir things up. Now, don't get me wrong, there are some valid reasons behind these policies, like promoting self-sufficiency and making sure nations aren't overly dependent on each other for critical resources. But here's the thing, these tariffs have unintended consequences that can hurt more than help the very industries they're trying to protect. Take the tariffs that were imposed recently, for example. These aren't just affecting traditional products like steel and aluminum, but high-tech materials used in semiconductor production as well. And that's where things start to get tricky. For instance, materials like silicon wafers and precision equipment, which are essential for making advanced chips, have gotten way more expensive. And these aren't just minor price hikes. We're talking about 10 to 25% increases in some cases. Products that the semiconductors go into are going to get hit by, by tariffs. And that, that's the thing. Most semiconductors come into the U.S. inside other things like PCs. These higher costs get passed along the supply chain, meaning companies like TSMC and Intel, who are already dealing with tight margins, are now facing even higher production costs. And you know what? NVIDIA will be even more in trouble than other companies, as the global demand for AI chips, gaming GPUs, and cloud infrastructure skyrockets. The company is already feeling the effects of increased material costs, but it's it's not just the costs that are a problem. Access to cutting edge manufacturing tools like EUV lithography machines, which are crucial for producing chips under three nanometers, is becoming more restricted and expensive. Building machines that rely on this level of precision is a nightmare. It takes three months to assemble and test the 800 circuits, 1300 cables, and 400 boards that make up these water-enhanced machines for making transistors. These tools are vital for making the next generation of high-performance chips. And with the tariffs affecting their import, companies like NVIDIA face serious obstacles in obtaining the necessary equipment to stay competitive. Now, while US companies like NVIDIA are facing these challenges, Chinese companies like DeepSeek are actually benefiting from the situation. I started this channel to talk about topics like this because it's something I'm really passionate about. If you enjoyed the video, I'd really appreciate it if you subscribed. It helps a lot.